Have you ever felt like you're spinning your wheels in the world of web development? Like, no matter how many hours you put in, you feel like you're not getting anywhere? Well, let me tell you something, <laughs> I've been there. Early in my career as a dev, I struggled big time. I lacked the confidence, I felt like a fraud, you name it. But here's the thing, after eight years in tech, I realized there's one main thing that holds most of us back, and no, it's not your technical skills or your experience. That's why today, I really wanna dive deep into what it is, how it's affecting you, and most importantly, how to overcome it. All right, let's get into it. So first off, let's talk about imposter syndrome. You know, that nagging feeling that you're not really cut out for this, that feeling that you're just faking it, and at any moment now, someone's gonna tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, you're not a real developer. I remember when I landed my first job in tech, I remember when I walked into that office and I saw all these brilliant minds typing away. And I remember I thought, what am I doing here? Like, I honestly felt like a fraud. Why? Because I got that job after learning code for only three months, which is not normal. I felt like I didn't belong here because I probably don't deserve it since I didn't have a degree. But here's the kicker. Over time, I got to know them a little better. These people that I looked up to and guess what? I learned that they all felt the same way themselves. Even the senior developers with years of experience confessed having moments where they themselves questioned their own abilities. I had a mentor a couple years ago and he was honestly one of the best developers I've ever met. To be honest, I think he started learning how to code at 13 years old. And one day he told me this, he told me, Chris, some days I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't know what you're doing? Dude, you've been coding since you were 13 and you're in your 30s now, right? That blew my mind away because if someone like him could feel that way, maybe I wasn't alone and we're really not. You see, imposter syndrome is more common than you realize, especially in tech where things evolve so rapidly. There's new frameworks coming out, new libraries, there's new languages. It's literally impossible to know everything. So feeling like you don't know enough is actually a good sign. Why? Because it actually proves and shows that you're aware of how vast this field is. You're aware of what you don't know. And if you are aware of what you don't know, now you know what you need to learn. What's even more scary is if you're not aware of what you lack in and act like you're better than you really are. So when it comes to imposter syndrome, I think first you need to simply acknowledge that you are feeling this way. Don't suppress it. I think even writing it down will help, or if not, talk to someone about it. And I think it's important to get it out in the open, right? And if it's you, share, yo, share it in the comment section below and share with other folks. Secondly, I think it's incredibly important to connect with your peers. Join developer communities, online forums, go to local meetups in your city, if not the next city or town over, whatever you can find, because the more people you speak with, the more friends you make with, who are also learning how to code, who are also new in this industry, who are new in their tech careers, you'll actually quickly realize that many other people actually share the same feelings that you feel. Third, I think it's also really important to celebrate the small wins. One thing that I used to do, I don't do anymore, but when I started was, was actually keeping a journal of your achievements, no matter how small, and I mean it. You saw the tricky bug, write it down. You completed a project, note it. Over time, this log actually becomes tangible. Tangible proof of your actual progress that you can see, which in return will help you feel more confident, right? Now, next, what else holds developers back? Well, let's shift gears and talk about, I think, a sensitive topic, which are tutorials. Now look, I love a good tutorial as much as the next person. I think they're amazing when it comes to learning new concepts, when you're learning a new technology, but there's also a dark side to tutorials, something that I like to call, or we like to call, everyone likes to call, tutorial hell. Back when I was learning JavaScript, I was glued to tutorials. Like I would literally follow along and build a project. Like literally, even at my first job on a job, I'd watch tutorials in front of my boss's office trying to build something, right? Literally showing him I don't know what I'm doing, right? But anyway, I'd follow along, I'd build a project, and I'd feel great at that moment. But then when I tried to start something on my own, try to build something on my own, I'd hit a wall and I'd feel like a total loser because why can't I code like the person teaching us? Why can't I code like the person in the video? He makes it look so easy. I'd always have a blank screen. I'd always just stare at that blinking cursor on my monitor, having zero idea on where to start. 
start. And then finally, years later in my career, I realized this is why I need to stop tutorials. Because when I'm doing tutorials, all I'm doing is literally just copying what they tell me to type and not actually understanding the concepts. I was kind of like a chef who could only cook while watching a cooking show. Take away the TV and I'm lost in the kitchen. No, no actually, even if I had a TV, I'd still be lost in the kitchen. You see, tutorial hell happens when you become dependent on step-by-step -step guides. When you become dependent on these tutorials, you get so used to being led by the hand that you never develop the problem solving skills you need to tackle projects independently. It's kind of like having the training wheels on your bicycle, but you never learn how to bike without the training wheels. You have to be willing and have the courage to fall on your feet. So then how do we get over tutorial? Hall? Number one, active learning over passive watching like everyone else in the world, right? So don't just watch, but actually engage. Pause the video, P maybe maybe predict the next step in the video and see if you're right. And if you're wrong, it's fine. But what this does is that this can and this will turn passive watching into finally active learning. You're no longer just copying and pasting what they're telling you to type. Secondly, and I say this all the time, especially when I mentor folks, build projects from scratch. Okay, choose a simple project a simple idea and challenge yourself to build it without any tutorials. It could be a to-do app, a personal blog site, anything that actually interests you. Just build it because to be honest and to be frank, on a job, you don't have tutorials to help you. What do you have? Documentation. That's why it brings me to my next point. Use documentation and actual official guides from the technology that you're using. If it's Python, go to the Python website. JavaScript, go to the JavaScript website, right? Get comfortable with reading documentation. This is so important. Like I'm someone who has this dyslexia. I hate reading. Documentation is terrifying. I know it's not as exciting as a video to watch, but this is really where you do learn how to code, where you learn how to find answers on your own. Last but not least, when it comes to how to overcome tutorial hell, set specific goals. Instead of saying, I want to learn React, actually set a goal. Like for example, I want to build a React app that fetches and displays API data. This will actually give your learning a direction. Like you're not just learning everything at once, you're learning detailed things that you would actually use in the job. So again, the one thing holding you back isn't your coding ability, right? or your lack of experience, it's that pesky imposter syndrome and the comfort zone of tutorial hell. But here's the good news. Recognizing these obstacles is a first step to overcoming them. By acknowledging your feelings, stepping out of your comfort zone, and actively engaging in problem solving, you're actually setting up yourself for success. So it's important to remember every developer, including me, including Mark Zuckerberg, including Bill Gates, you name it, has felt this way at some point in their career. The big difference is then how will you actually respond? Anyway, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this. But more importantly, share your thoughts in the comments below. Have you experienced imposter syndrome or been stuck in tutorial hell? How the heck did you deal with it? Let's get the conversation going because your story might actually inspire someone else that needs it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next video. Peace.